Beginning in 1861, runaway slaves began to seek refuge by the thousands behind Union lines. The first slaves who ran away to Union lines were returned to their owners. But when slaves entered General Benjamin Butler's camp at Fortress Monroe, Virginia, he labeled them contraband of war and put them to work. General Grant followed his lead. I am using them as teamsters, hospital attendants, company cooks, and so forth, thus saving soldiers to carry the musket. I don't know what is to become of these poor people in the end, but it weakens the enemy to take them from them. President Lincoln's initial policy toward the slaves was ambivalent. My paramount object in the struggle is to save the Union, and is not either to save or to destroy slavery. If I could save the Union without freeing any slave, I would do it. And if I could save it by freeing all the slaves, I would do it. And if I could save it by freeing some and leaving others alone, I would also do that. At first, because he was concerned about maintaining the loyalty of the border slave states, Kentucky, Maryland, and Missouri particularly, and because he wanted to uh, have the support of the Northern Democrats for this war effort, Lincoln was very careful to define this war as a war only to preserve the Union and not a war against slavery. But as time went on, uh, and as the war moved into its second year in 1862, Lincoln came under increasing pressure uh, from several fronts, from the anti-slavery wing of his own party, from black leaders in the North, from the recognition that European powers saw no distinction between the Union and the Confederacy on the issue of slavery. And Lincoln also became increasingly convinced that the black population, the slave population, uh, was an important factor in the strength of one side or the other in the war. We must free the slaves or be ourselves subdued. On September 22, 1862, after a close Union victory at Antietam, Lincoln issued the Emancipation Proclamation, declaring freedom for all slaves in the areas of rebellion. Now, the Emancipation Proclamation was a very clever document that walked this very fine line. One, it did not free the slaves. It applied only to slaves in areas then under the control of those in rebellion against the United States. The Emancipation Proclamation did not apply to the states that never left the Union. But let me tell you what it did do. It said to European nations, this war is a holy war for freedom. It focused the war on the slave issue and it forced the South into the position of being recognized as that section that was fighting specifically to preserve the institution of slavery. The Emancipation Proclamation intensified pressure on the government from abolitionists, free blacks in the North, and freed slaves in the South to permit blacks to serve in the Union Army. In military circles, many officers had no confidence in black soldiers, and many white soldiers said they would refuse to fight alongside them. But this prejudice was gradually overcome by a simple reality. A black soldier could stop a bullet just as well as a white one. Once Lincoln made the decision for emancipation, uh, and based that decision in part on the equation of military manpower, that is, uh, proclaiming emancipation will take so much labor power away from the Confederacy and add it to the Union side. And the logical extension of that was to mobilize able-bodied male ex-slaves to fight on the Union sides. Uh, so in early 1863, the Lincoln administration made uh, a decision and a commitment to draw on that source of military manpower and created the Bureau of Colored Troops uh, to enlist and recruit black soldiers uh, in state regiments. He 
easily the most famous of the black units in the United States Army during the Civil War was the 54th Massachusetts. It was a regiment made up largely of free black men from various northern states, some former slaves, but not predominantly former slaves. Uh, they had their most famous action uh, against Battery Wagner or Fort Wagner near Charleston, South Carolina in July 1863. They suffered very high casualties there. Their Colonel Robert Gould Shaw uh, from Massachusetts was killed, was buried with the dead black men from his unit. Uh, and that uh, resonated uh, with people in the North, especially who believed in emancipation. It showed that black men uh, could be courageous under fire. This was an especially striking example of a black unit doing well under fire. By arming the Negro, we have added a powerful ally. Very early on, the South, outraged by the fact that the North would employ black soldiers to fight against them, said that if we capture these black soldiers, we will not treat them like prisoners of war. We'll enslave them or we'll kill them. And we'll do similar kinds of things to their white officers. For Southern citizens in Union-occupied territory, the arming of former slaves added insult to injury. Our citizens, who had been accustomed to meet and treat the Negroes only as respectful servants, were mortified, pained, and shocked to encounter them in towns and villages and on the public roads by scores and hundreds and thousands wearing federal uniforms and bearing bright muskets and gleaming bayonets. Black soldiers not only had to fight against the South to conquer slavery, they had to fight against Northern prejudice for the right to be paid and treated as ordinary soldiers. African Americans who joined this early military effort were upset about a number of things. One, they didn't like the fact that they couldn't be commissioned officers. Two, they weren't paid the same as white troops at comparable ranks. Can you imagine? Lesser pay, restricted rank, facing more horrendous consequences. Empowered by a growing sense of equality, some units refused to accept less pay than white soldiers. Others worked to change the Army's policy against black officers. Once let the black man get upon his person the brass letter U.S. Let him get an eagle on his button and a musket on his shoulder and bullets in his pocket, and there is no power on earth which can deny that he has earned the right to citizenship. <laughs> 